welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be exploring uh, what if the dinosaurs survived concept in the book New Dinosaurs and Alternate Evolution, written by Dougal Diglis, the same person who, I mean Dougal Dixon, the same person who wrote After Man. Are these scenarios the most accurate? No, but it's a good story and it aligns with the concept I want to do. So today we're going to be exploring the New Dinosaurs world. The world which is divided like this. The new dinosaurs world is divided into around seven realms. The Nearctic realm, the tro Neotropical realm, the Paleoarctic realm, the Ethiopian realm, the Oriental realm, and the Australian, Australian realm. Something like that. And we're going to be exploring the climates and the creatures that live in this new world unrecognizable to us. In this episode of Incoming, we shall be exploring these creatures from that time forgot. Geographically, the Ethiopian realm is pretty similar to the Africa we know in our timeline. Minus North Africa and plus a little bit of Arabia, it is pretty much the same with jungle in the central, like the Congo Plate, the deserts in the north, like Saharan Africa, surrounded by grasslands, much like the savanna. And their creatures on this continent include the Lank, properly known as Herbifangus longicolum, which actually evolved from pterosaurs like Pteranodon. They lost their power of flight when the grasslands started spreading, and they evolved as ground-dwelling herbivores. And then we have the worm, also known as Vemrosaurus predenbronchus, which is act, takes the role of, like, snakes. It's a burrower, and it hunts small mammals. Then we have Megalosaurus, act properly known as Megalosaurus modernus, which is one of the last large carnivores of the Megalosaurus family known in this book. Megalosaurus. Most dinosaurs now d evolved different forms. This is one of the last of the properly recognizable dinosaurs. This on the African continent along with Titanosaur, probably known as Ultimosaurus Maximus, which is the largest herbivore in the continent, but it is no longer the largest herbivore. We'll get to that later. Then we have the dwarf Megalosaurus, Megalosaurus nanus, and dwarf titanosaur with Virgiltosaurus minimus. The Paleoarctic continent. I'm probably saying this wrong, but I don't really know how to pronounce it, so that's just what I'm going to go with. Is a, the massive continent spreading from what we know as Europe to North Africa, to the ends of Russia, J Korea, and J even Japan and North China. It is spread separate with the eastern being more tundra and forests, with and the western in Europe more mixed woodlands. Creatures in this continent include the Gastele, Formanthosaurus delacasta, which is like a small creature. The Bricket, which is a main herbivore and is obviously a hadrosaur relative, proper name Rubosaurus peltus. The Cone Eater, which is also another herbivore, probably, probably known as Stropophagantus borealis. And is also extremely retarded as this thing, known as a Jinx or Insunanosaurus Strabufacamus will wander with it for miles before it even realizes that it has an intruder in its herd. Yeah, so they're pretty retarded. And then we have the Trumbull, one of the migrating creatures in the east. This big bird, properly known as Gravenorus borealis, is the largest bird nowadays. And then also another migrator is the Tarantor, a modern ankylosaurid, properly known as Herbranosaurus armenatus. It's like an armadillo and a ankylosaurus combined. The Near Arctic realm, or as we know it, the North American continent, takes all of Canada, the United States, North Mexico, Greenland, and Iceland. 
This has some marvelous wonders. It is tundra and alpine in the north, and then forests in the also in the north, just not as far north. The mixed woodlands further south with deserts around where Arizona is. <laughs> then we have the Sprintosaurus for creatures. There are two species of Sprintosaurus. There's the crested version and then there's the smaller versions. And then we have the main medium-sized predator of North America known as the North Claw or Montecanus cursus. Then we have a modern Ceratopsian, the Monocorn or Monocornus Orchidantilus. If I pronounce any of these wrong, I'm sorry, but I don't really care. This is like the big herbivore, like Triceratops of this time. Then we have the Balaclav, or Niverosaurus yetiformi, and it gets its name because it lives deep in the mountains, like yetis. Along with that, there's the Mountain Lemur, or mount Mountain Leaper, Montecanus saltus. There's also this weird looking springe thing, or Nicaramanella. Ah, blah, blah. Then we have my favorite realm, the Neotropical Realm. This contains South Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, and all of South America. It has mixed forests in the center and in the north, deserts and mountains in the south, with tropical forests and rainforests in the central north. Creatures are the probably the most amazing on this continent, which include the pangaloon, which is like a pangolin, but it's a reptile. Then we have the water gulp, which is like a seal, but a reptile. And then we have the tartosaurus, or tartosaurus armatus, which is one of the few two sauropod species left on South America. This one, uh, rather than opting for size, opted for armor, so it looks like a giant turtle with a long neck. Which turtles do have long necks, but they're just tucked up in their shells for some of them. Although, the one that did go for large size, which is now the largest land-dwelling creature in this world, is the lumber, or Elephantosaurus gigantus. It is like a sauropod, but it has a trunk on the end. And its size deters most predators that exist in this world. Except for this few that rather than evolving from the small, lightweight car herb of carnivores, rather evolved from the larger carnivores. Which is includes my favorite, the Cutlass Tooth, or Seadelontosaurus gladius. This is like the saber-toothed tiger of this world. Its teeth are like razors, and it hunts in packs of up to five where it can kill even the lumber. And this thing, rather than evolving from the dinosaurs like Coelophysis, rather evolved from the larger carnivores like Allosaurus. And other carnivores from North America also exist down there. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, the largest dinosaur in North America and the most powerful dinosaur of all time, is still holding on in this world as Gourmand, or Giantosaurus Tardus. Tyrannosaurus rex continued to evolve and move down south to South America. It completely lost its arms, and its legs are now in the dead center of its body to balance its head and its tail. And now it is com a complete scavenger. It can It's too slow to hunt, but it is also m even more massive than T-Rex at 60 feet long. And then we have the dip, also known as Herondinosaurus martimes, which is, it looks kind of like a Dinocheris, and it is a fisher. The Oriental Realm makes up most of the Indian subcontinent, Southeast China, Southeast Indochina, and the Pacific, most of the Pacific Islands, including the Philippines and most of Indonesia. It makes up tropical forests further south, with mixed woodlands further north, and even a little desert in the northwest. Creatures in this land include the Rajafand, or Gregiosaurus titanops, which is another large sauropod. And unlike most sauropods of the older era during the Mesozoic, this creature is actually protective of its young, whereas most sauropods before this would have just laid the eggs and kept on going. 
We have the Numskull or Spheratocephalosaurus. This Riptaurus, which is like a modern Pachycephalosaurus. Looks like an alien, kind of. Then we have the Tree Worm or Arbora serpentis longus, which is like the worm from Africa, except it is yellow and it lives in a tree. Get it right, stupid. This isn't the same worm from Africa. It is totally different. Then we have the Flirt. This thing's pretty cool, or Lambdasaurus altaris. It's like a modern s <laughs> pterosaur, it has, except it has feathers too, and it lives in trees. And we have the Pissarro, which is like a modern water-dwelling bir bird, or Umbarala saltera. Yeah, this thing's pretty cool too. Welcome to the Australiasin realm. This makes up the continental or island of Australia, New Guinea, and New Zealand. It is mostly desert, except for the few tropical forests on the coast of Australia and New Guinea, with mixed forests on New Zealand. And like Australia in our timeline, this world has the weirdest creatures on Australia, including the Cribum, or Cribiampasaurus rubicandalus. It's kind of like a flamingo. It's even pink. Then we have the pouch, which is really weird because it has a translucent pouch under its mouth. And the pouch, or Sacorosaurus spit, SPP. It's like, it's really weird. Then we have Guana, or Grillophosaurus flaus. And despite the, despite the look like it's a Pachycephalosaurus, it's actually a modern descendant of Mutaburosaurus. Which actually did live in Australia during the dinosaur times. Then we have the clune, which is a moa-like creature that evolved from flightless pterosaurs. And its name is Perdalosaurus rufus. Then we have the shore runner. We it eats bugs and trees. Now there's many creatures I didn't get to in this episode. If you really want to look at it yourself, just look up the book. It is New Dinosaurs and Alternate Evolution for, like, an audiobook or something. And you can read it yourself. I'll put a link in the description. Yeah. Is this scenario the most accurate for its creatures? No. This is a pretty old book. Some species' relationships weren't known for a while. And when this was written, they didn't know it at the time. But it's still a fascinating scenario. The creatures are well detailed and they're fleshed out very well. I give this book a 8 out of 10. If you want to read it yourself, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good read. But some of the creatures are pretty weird. <laughs>